Okay, members. Uh, Ms. Karen Mullen has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Education. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in your places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Education to address concerns in relation to the Council for the Curriculum, Examinations and Assessments proposals on the delivery of the curriculum and qualifications for this academic year. And I call the Minister of Education. I thank the member for her question. I'm conscious that this has been a very stressful time for schools and for pupils who are anxious for clarity in relation to the examinations process this year. However, it did take time for the ramifications of the full suite of proposals, some of which have been accepted and others haven't, uh, to listen to and consider the views of a wide range of stakeholders and indeed uh, to liaise also with other jurisdictions, and then make decisions that are in the best interest of all. As I confirmed on Friday, it's my priority to ensure that public examinations can go ahead in this academic year, if at all possible. They are the most valid and reliable measure of educational outcomes, and it's important that young people are given the opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge and skills through the examination process. The decisions that I announced take into account the disruption that there has been to date, as well as the potential for further disruption during this academic year. They go significantly further in terms of adjustments and mitigations uh, than in England and Wales, while still ensuring that they will remain robust, valid, comparable and portable. They will alleviate the burden of assessment on our young people while still providing as much opportunity as possible to cover the subject specifications which are important for progression. The changes are designed to ensure young people are supported uh, and their well-being prioritised and I hope that the clarity provided will give young people the confidence that they will be able, enabled to complete their qualifications and progress uh, to either the next stage of either education or employment. And I call Karen Mullen to ask a supplementary question. Good, Ken Corder. Minister, thank you for coming to the Chamber today. But I want to express my disappointment that uh, you didn't bring these proposals to the Assembly. We all want to so see schools remain open. And as a parent of a year 12 pupil who is on her third absence, I'm acutely aware that her education needs are best met in the classroom, as is her mental health and well-being. That being said, schools must be supported to do so. And in today, my city, the largest all girls post-primary school uh, has closed for this week, with large numbers of pupils and staff in all our schools uh, absent. Minister, in these proposals, I and others don't see meaningful recognition of this prolonged uh, disruption to education. Can you inform me of the contingency plans say and yourself are putting in place? Well, look, I thank the member for um, her remarks. In terms of timescale, uh, there were a range of consultations which took place involving the stakeholder group and trade unions, involving, obviously, discussions with SIA itself. But also, I think the last piece in the jigsaw was discussion. There have been discussions on a number of levels on it with the, um, the other parts of the four nations from a UK point of view, particularly, I suppose, England and Wales, in terms of the GCSE side of it, which was then taking place on Thursday. Um, I wanted to make sure that, from that point of view, the information was got to schools as quickly as it possibly could after that. So it was released then on Friday morning to schools. I take on board what the member has said in terms of the disruption, um, and indeed that the best place for children to receive their education is on a face-to-face -face basis within schools. Um, I therefore hope that the member will join with me in urging that when the executive takes decisions around um, what restrictions will be put in place, that schools should be given the top priority and that schools remain open throughout whatever measures are needed to be put in place. In terms of the, uh, I felt it was important to try to get the information around, particularly around curriculum issues, and there's been um, a number of mitigations within this, particularly in terms of assessment units, uh, of, uh, on optionality, of timing as well, and we've made sure that that has also been compatible with the timing of examinations uh, for those who will take exams outside of SIA themselves. Uh, SIA have been tasked to drop um, a range of options of uh, contingency plans. They have been tasked as part of this to do that, and I will await those, that piece of information, because it's not simply a question of a single contingency, because there could be a range of things that could happen in May and June, probably the most likely being that while exams will go ahead, there will be certain individuals who will not be able to do specific exams. So, They've been tasked to do that, and I await uh, their 
um, options that they will bring forward in relation to that before making a further announcement. I call Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the Minister accept criticism that he has prioritised an examination system over the well-being of students with this approach? And can I ask how many teachers and pupils are currently absent due to COVID and what level of absence would be necessary to move to teacher assess grades for 2021? As I've indicated, there will be a range of contingency plans have been put in place or will be put in place in connection with that. Look, the reality is examinations must be the first option. It must be the best possible option because they are, by their nature, objective in their, um, in their nature. If there is one lesson I think that we have learned, particularly from 2020, doing a rigorous examination system as opposed to um, either what is ultimately subjective opinions from uh, centre assessed grades or indeed a mathematical formula based upon previous uh, data, all those are second best to doing the uh, examinations. It is also critical um, that if we are looking after the well-being of our pupils, that they are able to progress on a robust basis. Now, if we take particularly the issue of A-levels, it is clear that other jurisdictions across the board will be doing um, A-levels and doing them by way of examination. And again, ministers will come to a similar conclusion in that position um, as myself. If we had a situation in which Northern Ireland was going on some form of solo run, detaching ourselves from the examination process uh, elsewhere, we would detrimentally impact on our pupils. It would make uh, it would make it more difficult for them to obtain university places or indeed uh, to be found in a, a scenario where they could compete on a level playing field as regards jobs. So therefore it is looking after the long term well being of our pupils that have put examinations as the first possible option. As indicated, uh, there will need, however, to be contingency plans if uh, because of health circumstances uh, they are not able to carry on in a full fashion. I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Given the scale of interest and input to the pre-paper consultation, I see no equity across subjects, and I don't see any impact assessment on those whom these measures may affect most. I can ask the Minister how much of the post-consultation CCEA recommendations made it to the Department's final paper? Well, there were a, a few areas where I think there was a distinction that was put in place. I think there was adjustments, for instance, in terms of the English language side of it, which actually made English language compatible, for example, with other languages. Uh, that was principally on the grounds of uh, health considerations, because speaking and learning, while I appreciate there's no perfect solution in relation to that, the general position was to ensure that uh, there could be assessment uh, units that could be ultimately be removed to try and lesser the burden of assessment. It means in practical terms that a student who was going to be facing an examination would have a slimmed down content. And that when we were talking about speaking and learning, uh, sorry, speaking and listening, um, that, uh, that that was the one that, that posed, if you like, the greatest difficulty from a direct health point of view, along with some other subjects, a practical, uh, sometimes with certain uh, practical lab tests that would have uh, had a degree of impact within that. I think one of the other areas has been to say to CCEA um, that, and there is a strong belief among schools, and one that I would share, that optionality needs to be clearly explored. That was not something with CCEA um, had as part of their final submission in that regard, I believe that that will give greater opportunities to pupils, and I think it's something which does need to be taken into account to, again, give some choice when it comes to students doing their final exam. It would also give a level of protection uh, to schools as they uh, work through the, the curriculum and range of subjects. I call Robin Newton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and uh, Minister. Recognising that we are in extremely difficult days in this uh, pandemic situation, could I ask the Minister to comment on what progress Northern Ireland has made uh, against uh, the other jurisdictions within the UK and perhaps the Republic of Ireland as well? Thank you. Well, directly speaking, and, um, I think there's a couple of things I would, I would point out. Um, a lot of jurisdictions find a similar position. So in terms of particularly the timing of announcements now, I think in an ideal world, we'd like to be in a position that announcements were made at a much earlier stage. But uh, we're in a position, I think, that Scotland announced possibly two days uh, ahead of us in terms of what they were doing. Ex England has announced subsequently, and Wales has announced um, the position as regards 2021, or sorry, will be announcing 
um, probably roughly about the end of this month. So it's, it's about trying to get the balance of trying to have that levels of discussions within that. I'm not aware, I don't believe, I stand to be corrected, that in terms of examinations that the Republic has made an announcement in terms of um, uh, their leaving certificate uh, for this year. It is also the case, though, that as we are in a competitive market uh, with uh, those other jurisdictions, it is also important to note that consideration that all those uh, jurisdictions have made in terms of moving forward, in terms of particularly restrictions that they have around COVID, are all predicated upon uh, decisions that, that schools remain open. And I note, for instance, this morning, I think it was actually the health minister um, in the Republic of Ireland announced that, uh, that it was his view that, that um, schools would not have any form of extended half-term break, that the, the key focus is ensuring that um, education is delivered to all, and that is particularly pertinent for those doing public examinations, because they're going to be in a competition with a range of other jurisdictions uh, for the likes of university places and for future employment. Well, Keith Archibald. Um, Minister, in relation to GCSEs, this term, as, as my colleague from FOIL has already outlined, has seen varying degrees of disruption across schools due to COVID. And for many students, this will um, exacerbate the impact of the closures from last year. There's concern that the proposed um, unit reduction for GCSEs will be somewhat meaningless, as it will be a unit covered in year 11. So what further measures have you or SIA considered to take account for that and make up for lost teaching time? Well, there's, there's an... I thank the member for her answer. There's a range of things. Um, the units will enable, uh, for example, at least one unit to be um, reduced in terms of assessment. Indeed, the level of assessment can be reduced up to 40% for most, uh, most subjects. Within English language, which is particularly important, again, um, there was a view taken, a different position taken to SIA, which enabled then effectively a 20% reduction in English language. The only GCSE unit which is not directly reduced, and it's the same, I think, in other jurisdictions, is that of mathematics, which then becomes probably more than any other subject, is effectively progressive as it moves into A-levels. And I think there was a concern that if there's a direct reduction in terms of mathematics, that that would lead to a level of disadvantage to, to students as they moved ahead into um, A-level. There has also been, as indicated, we've asked SIA to look at optionality, which can apply to both GCSE and A-levels, which will widen the choice for students uh, that are there in place. And also as part of that, uh, there has been, while I appreciate, I think there's a level of constraint within Northern Ireland because of our traditional holidays on July and August, we've been able to push things back a little bit to ensure then that uh, the GCSEs and A-levels effectively begin a week later and end a week later than they normally would. And we've worked with other jurisdictions to try to make sure that where students are facing potential timetables from other um, awarding bodies, that those are made compatible with that as well. But there's also, I think, been the direct intervention, uh, which the executive has supported, uh, of initially some initiatives over the summer, but particularly with the Engage programme for 11.2 million, which has been distributed to schools and a freedom given within that. It's been particularly focused in um, at schools. It's been an advantage for schools who've got high, higher levels of social disadvantage, who have an above average level of free school meals. But there's been a level of funding that's been made available to um, all schools, including um, special schools as well, to try to make sure there's a level of educational catch-up. None of these things are perfect, but I think collectively we're trying to do all that we can to bridge the gap between where we are and where ideally all of us would like to be. Call Daniel McCrossan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister, the gross mishandling of uh, awarding of grades this year has been described as nothing short of shambolic. Have, can the Minister assure this House that lessons have been learned, and can he update uh, this Assembly as to when the independent review of SEA will begin, and who will be on that panel? Well, there has been a, a, an outside body. Uh, we've sought tenders. Uh, we've now reached a point at which I've signed off directly on a tender within that. But given that there's still a slight level of commercial sensitivity, I'll be making an announcement soon on that. That has reached the point it is an organisation which has no connection with the department uh, or directly with government on that basis. It will be a direct contract. We've reached the point where that has then been submitted as a business case to the Department of Finance. Once it has cleared that hurdle, then the work will be able to begin. And I would anticipate that, that once that has started, it would probably be roughly about a six-week timetable that they would have to uh, examine that to see precisely what happened in, in 2020 and what lessons have been learned that if there is any uh, future action to be taken at, at any point in the future, 
uh, what um, actions can then be correspondingly incorporated. Call Roy Beggs. Speaker. SIA have made an announcement of adjustments to, to the curriculum in some areas, but in others there is still to be final confirmation given to teachers. So when will all teachers be aware of the final curriculum of their subjects in order that they know what to teach their children and what they will be examined on? Well, I would hope any of the absolute detail will be there very soon in any remaining subject. I should point out that SIA did a consultation. They got responses. They had proposals. It is then the case, because there were adjustments made to that by the department and by myself, that was announced on Friday. So they are then dealing, if you like, with the outworkings of, of the announcement that has been made. And so therefore, in terms of any further details, because some fit very easily into a particular adjustment uh, that is there, uh, others will take a little bit more time. And consequently, I think we'll be working through to get those uh, finalised for every subject very shortly. Well, Catherine Kelly. Uh, Minister, what would you say to young people who worked very hard to achieve their AS level grade, who will now not see that grade included as part of their overall A level? You have said previously that to incorporate it as part of the overall grade would be very different to the approach of England and Wales. Why won't you put our students first and recognise their hard work? Because I think we have got to have comparability and portability. It is probably on A levels more than any other subject anyone from here is competing with a range of other jurisdictions, particularly for university places. So our A-levels have got to be seen as robust as possible. And the fact that we have reached a position as regards AS levels and A-levels, which are comparable across all jurisdictions that do A-levels, I think is important. Northern Ireland, we like to think of ourselves, and in many ways we are, a special place. I'm sure we all um, glory in, the, in, our, in our homeland. But as, when it comes to qualifications, we cannot simply be on a level of solo run. And in terms of robustness, we have, in terms of AS levels, a grade which has been attributed. Now, in previous years, uh, the position was that, effectively, that grade represented a particular mark, which you could then get 40 per cent. You can get 40 per cent, mathematically, of 65 per cent. You can't get 40 per cent of a B and try and marry that in with an examination system which gives a, a grade. It's not so much comparing apples and oranges, but perhaps comparing apples and orange juice, uh, if I may use that uh, analogy. And in terms of the robustness of the decision to marry in, uh, I think where it can be avoided, to try and marry in some level of assessment with an actual grade that's produced by an examination, again, you're not comparing like with like. And so we've got to be fair to everybody. We've got to ensure that those who qualify in 2021 will be regarded by future employers, by universities, as having uh, something which is robust, which there is no question mark over their examination. That is why I think it's important that uh, the integrity of our A-levels, indeed of all our, uh, of our, all our qualifications, um, is as robust as possible. Call him Rosemary Barton. Thank you very much, Minister, for your answers so far. Uh, it's in relation to BTEC qualifications. You know how BTEC quali qualifications are quite often compared to A-levels. Has any thoughts been given to any work being done with them? I think there will be um, a bit of liaison with that. BTEC qualifications fall under the Department of Economy, so they will be as technical qualifications. But the fact that, to some extent, there's a template being set, um, I think my colleague Dan Dodds will be wanting to ensure then that BTEC qualifications are also in line with the, the other qualifications that come through the Department of Education. Nicole Morris Bradley. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, thank you very much to the Minister for his answers so far. Uh, I would expect a reduction in the curriculum, Minister, uh, but can the Minister give as early an indication as possible to teachers so that they can be prepared and clear on how best to prepare children for examinations? And will CCEA be properly prepared for examinations than they were last term? And will there be test runs to ensure a smooth outcome that will benefit everyone, schools, teachers, parents and pupils? Well, look, I think Thank we, we do have, uh, memory makes a very valid point, and we do have a situation that last year, across different jurisdictions, uh, because of both the level of uncertainty of COVID and indeed the time scales, there were actions taken um, which there clearly wasn't time even particularly to trial things on it. Now, we'll wait and see what uh, emerges from the, uh, the independent examination of that. We do at least have the opportunity um, this year to be able to test out 
where we can with contingency arrangements ahead of May-June time. Uh, it is also the case that, as indicated, there will be a level of slim-down uh, curriculum in terms of content, in terms of what is assessed. And there is, as I said, no perfect solution to this, but it will at least enable uh, a certain amount of cognizance to be taken of the level of disruption that has been uh, there for pupils. Call Justin McNulty. Graham Yogurt, Count Carla. Minister, thank you for your answers thus far. Are you confident that these proposals, Minister, will facilitate an assessment that will be a true reflection of students' ability? And how, can you outline how the proposals will impact languages such as Irish, Spanish, French? Well, from, from up, I'll avoid the temptation to build my ability to answer that bilingually in that, in that regard for the member. Yes, I'm, I'm confident these are the best possible route. As indicated, I think obviously contingency plans will be put in place. Uh, we tried to take a fairly, um, I think it was broadly speaking, a similar approach on a range of the, the language subjects, be it Irish, English, French, Spanish, etc., um, which is largely speaking, I think, derived from both a, a need in a common way to then have a reduced level of, of content assessment to take account of the disruption. But it's also the case, I think, the, that the information that we got. Um, and I appreciate this will not be perfect for every, uh, every student, was that particularly from a health point of view, assessment of speaking and listening, effectively what we might describe as the oral element, was the one that from a health point of view was one that was maybe going to be potentially most at risk. So there's been a consistent approach taken uh, across languages to reduce that level of content. And that, therefore, is something that's very clear uh, to all students. It's not perfect. And if we were in a COVID-free situation, there's a range of these measures that would not simply be considered, but I think we have to marry in both the education and academic um, situation and try to be as fair to all students with also the health implications. The members, that concludes this item of business and uh, we will uh, finish, as I said, the urgent question to the Minister of Education. And now I invite members to take your ease until we uh, return to the debate on the health protection regulations in just a moment.